Geospatial clustering is becoming increasingly common. Some important applications include reducing the size of large location datasets and understanding large-scale mobility patterns through taxi trip clustering for urban planning and transportation. Clustering models have been widely used in unsupervised machine learning applications, but how do we know which clustering methods work best for geospatial applications? Scikit-learn is a popular machine learning toolbox in Python. On Scikit-learn's page, on different clustering algorithms, there are comparisons between 10 different algorithms. The strength of these visualizations is that you for sure know the ground truth. Two circles are supposed to be two clusters. Three blobs are supposed to be three clusters, and so on. But this does not explicitly tell us how these algorithms will fare with geospatial data, which can be quite complex. In this video, I will compare three representative methods, k-means, hierarchical clustering, and db-scan for geospatial clustering. k-means is probably the most popular clustering model. It partitions n observations into k linearly separable regions. DBSCAN is becoming increasingly popular for geospatial data. It stands for density-based spatial clustering of applications with noise. DBSCAN is useful for distinguishing high-density regions from low-density regions. Hierarchical clustering builds a hierarchy of clusters and organizes the data into a tree-like structure, also known as a dendrogram. Based on the structure, Choices can be made as to where the tree should be cut. This video is going to be organized into first obtaining geospatial data, second applying the three clustering algorithms that we discussed, and finally evaluating which algorithm performs best. OSMNX is a Python-based package that obtains data from OpenStreetMap for subsequent network analysis. Let's use OSMNX for our geospatial data. From OSMNX, you can obtain the street network of Manhattan, which is essentially one large connected cluster of roads. Next for our analysis, we want to break the street network of Manhattan into three clusters to evaluate the performance of the clustering models that were mentioned before. In order to break the street networks into large clusters, we draw concepts from percolation theory, specifically the bond percolation model. In this model, bonds are randomly added at lattice sites. The percolation transition point corresponds to a critical fraction of bonds when at least one path exists connecting the top from the bottom. This is used to model phenomena such as fluid flow in a medium, for example, pouring coffee through grinds. At the percolation point, coffee flows through the grinds and drips downward. In this case, at the percolation point, which is p equals 0.5, the smaller cluster sizes become comparable to the largest cluster. I use the same idea on the street network of Manhattan, where edges are removed until the percolation point is reached, where we find three large clusters. Here you can see the three large components corresponding to the street network of Manhattan. At the percolation point, there is a sudden drop in size of the largest cluster, and the second and third largest clusters have a corresponding peak. From this, we obtain three clusters as the ground truth and remove the rest of the network. We use this fragmented network to test our three clustering algorithms. First, we try the k-means clustering model. In k-means, we first need to choose the number of clusters k. k-means finds the location of k centroids, which minimizes within cluster variances, where each point belongs to the cluster with the nearest mean. You can see the k-means iterations in action. And the final result is three linearly separated regions. The obvious choice here is k equals 3 as per the ground truth. As you can see, 
the three colors are linearly separated, which does not quite match the ground truth. This is a well-known limitation of k-means, in which it does not perform well with non-linearly separated datasets. But how would k-means perform if we did not know a priori the value of k, or how many clusters are actually there? This is many times the case in unsupervised learning applications. In this case, we use the elbow method. The elbow method finds the value of k corresponding to the distortion versus k graph, where distortion is the sum of squared distances from each point to its assigned center. The elbow of the graph is chosen to be the optimal k value. Basically, you can think of this as when there is only one cluster, the distortion score is the highest. When there are too many clusters, the distortion score is low. But the extreme case is when each individual point is in its own cluster, in which case the distortion score is zero. The elbow effectively balances out these extreme scenarios to find the most appropriate k. In this case, this corresponds to k equals six, but that makes the algorithm perform even worse in comparison to the ground truth. Next, we evaluate the dbscan algorithm. dbscan has two parameters, epsilon and minimum points. Points within a certain distance epsilon from a core cluster point are part of the same cluster. So points labeled A, B, and C are all part of the same cluster. Points A are labeled core points because they contain at least min points equals four within a distance epsilon, including the point itself. For example, the flashing point has four points within a distance epsilon. Non-core points B and C are reachable from core points but have less than min points within a distance epsilon. And finally, noise points labeled N are not reachable from core or non-core points. We choose min points equals five according to the heuristic to choose min points slightly greater than twice the dimensionality. To find the corresponding epsilon value, we plot the sorted distances from each point to their five nearest neighbors, since min points is five. The elbow of this curve gives the optimal epsilon value. You can think of this as, since we use min points equals five, the elbow gives us the k value corresponding effectively to the density threshold. Points with five nearest neighbor distances below this value are located in high density regions, whereas point with five nearest neighbor distances above this value are located in low density regions. dbscan applied to this data yields quite a horrible result. The spots of colors indicates the algorithm has found way too many clusters. So how do we fix this? We calibrate dbscan when the network is connected and not broken up into clusters. We do this by finding the lowest epsilon value that gives a single cluster. Applying this calibrated value on the network after the nodes are removed gives three clusters. You can see that the calibrated dbscan model performs much better. Finally, we look at hierarchical clustering. Suppose we start off with a data set of points A through F with locations as in the image. With agglomerative hierarchical clustering, each observation starts off in its own cluster and clusters are merged while moving up in the hierarchy. This is known as a dendrogram. To find clusters, we can either choose a certain number of clusters that we require, similar to k-means, or a minimum distance criterion, similar to what we did for dbscan. Let's say we didn't know the appropriate number of clusters, which is quite reasonable, and calibrate for the minimum distance threshold. First, we calibrate for the distance threshold, which is the minimum distance threshold that generates a single cluster when the network is fully connected. We see that in the case of agglomerative clustering, the model only gives one cluster when applied to the network after the nodes are removed. So which method performs best? Here I'm going to make the comparison in the case that we don't know the number of clusters a priori 
which is the case in most unsupervised machine learning applications. We see that K means generates six clusters and hierarchical clustering generates only a single cluster. Whereas dbscan generates three distinct clusters. So dbscan performs the best. Note that it is far from perfect, however. The codes and blog article are linked below. Feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you later with more data science projects.